speaking of 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 wrist locks, you know how uh, you know Rokus, right? Like you did a you did a yes. podcast with him, Martial Arts Journey. Yes. So he goes on uh, he goes on now, and and I, I love it because he's beefing. You know, he he went 180, right? He was like the Aikido guy, believed in it, had his own school, and everything. And then at one point, he got uh, uh, is yeah. that the right word? Dis- disillusioned. Right? Yes. He, yeah, he got disillusioned, and then he he went out and he tested it and. Blah 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 blah, and he tried. I think for a while to figure out, like, to try to make a keto work he, because he invested he the so old much time. Right, man. And mm-hmm. I, I went through the the same process with uh, with many of the martial arts systems that I, that I've studied over the years, man. And that, it's such an important journey for for everybody to do. But yeah, go on. Yeah. So so now he's he's um you know he's 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 talking about his journey. He's speaking his truth. How we see things, and he's also challenging uh, the Aikido community to essentially send them videos. Like, if they want to argue with him, they have to send them video proof that you know um, that it works. So there was a guy I, I found on a video. Um, I think it was today or yesterday. This guy, he was called Dan Wolfman, I believe, and he posted a video. I don't know if Rokus saw it yet, but he he tagged Rokus in it, right? To show him yeah. that wrist locks actually work. So this guy is an MMA guy. Oh, he does MMA. In the video, you see him in a cage uh, fighting. And what he did is that he 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 had this he had his opponent in the clinch, and he was giving. And so he was clinch. He was uh, he had his opponent in the clinch. He was kneeing him to death. He was giving him a couple of knees, and because uh, his opponent had his hands like you know uh, over him like that, and he had him he had the inside grip clinching him up like this. So then at one point he slipped he slipped off to the side, he grabbed the guy's wrist and then wrist locked him and uh, pivoted at the same time like a keto style and and brought him yeah. to the ground. And then, you know, I guess his uh, argument there is that look, it does work. You know, but um even though he was able to pull it off, like I think I don't know. What's what's your opinion on that? Like, I know you didn't see the video okay. yet. But I didn't see the didn't video, see but yeah, there's definitely some other factors at play. I mean, this guy is a professional MMA fighter. And obviously, he's athletic. He's strong. And he's also, as you mentioned, kneeing the guy to death first. There, there was a, a fight a while back. Was it Rodolfo Vieira? Um, you know, legendary jiu-jitsu competitor. He's, he has an MMA fight. And he loses. And the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, he loses by submission to a, a guy who's like a blue belt or a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And Rodolfo Vieira is a legendary black belt. And the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community lost their mind over this. Like, how could a how could a blue belt or a purple belt beat one of the best black belts? It's impossible. We don't understand it. Our minds are blown. So, so I watched this fight, and basically what happened, here's the play-by-play. The, the blue belt or purple belt, I'm, I'm just going to call him a blue belt. I don't remember his name. The blue belt punches Vieira in the head, then kicks him in the head, then elbows him in the head, and then hits him in the head a number of other times throughout the fight before he submits him. Meaning it's a radically different sport than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Right? When you factor in all these other things that are not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, then, well, we understand <laughs> It's a different animal. And that's the same thing with this, uh, this situation you're describing of the guy, the MMA fighter using an Aikido move. And I, I, use, I use moves like this all the time while sparring with my students and it blows their minds. But, you know, it's, it's not like how it is taught in Aikido. How it's taught in Aikido is, you know, the guy comes in, extends his arm, you grab that wrist from that cooperative opponent because there's no sparring in Aikido. Um, and then it just happens, right? But in a fight, what, what happens? People clinch and they throw punches and they fight and they knee each other to death. And then the guy who is more badly beaten is more prone to submit. This, this is how fights usually happen. This is how submissions usually happen in MMA. The guy gets beaten up first and then he gets submitted. It's very difficult to, to submit a fresh fighter. It's very difficult. When, when both guys are evenly matched, it's very difficult to submit a fresh fighter. And so when we see like a first round submission in the UFC, this, this is a really impressive feat to pull off. Um, generally, most of the submissions happen in the second and the third round because that's, that's after the guy has taken punishment, after he's tired, after he's demoralized, 
after he's already looking for a way out of the fight, when he's much more willing to give up that arm or stick his neck out a little bit, right? Because in the first round, you know, when everybody's fresh, when everybody is, is intact and they're not beaten to a pulp yet, right? They're not going to give up those opportunities. They're not going to give up the wrist, if you will. But again, if you have a guy in the clinch and you are dominating the clinch and you are kneeing him to the point where he is feeling the bad intentions and he wants a way out of that cage and, you know, he does, he's going to start making mistakes, like leaving his hand out there open where you can wrist lock. Here, if you don't know, folks at home watching, if you want to learn how to defend a wrist lock, here's a very simple technique. It's called making a tight fist. <laughs> Seriously, making a tight fist, which is why it's even so much harder to uh, wrist lock somebody in MMA gloves with the uh, the hands wrapped. So in one regard, what uh, with this guy, uh, what, I, what was his name again? Um, uh, something Wolfman. I think it might be Dan Wolfman, but uh, I'm not yeah, sure. Okay. But... This thing that Dan did, in one regard, it's more impressive because it's, it is harder to wrist lock somebody wearing MMA gloves. And then the other hand... From a, a pure Aikido perspective, less impressive because it's it's not pure Aikido. It's a it's a dirty rotten cage fight.